Hi, mystery writers. Welcome to Write a Killer Mystery. I'm Zara Altair, mystery author and creator of Write a Killer Mystery, the course for mystery writers. And today I want to talk about microtension and what that does for your story and your readers. First, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon for supporting these videos and getting this news out to you and if you would like to uh, become a patron there's a link in the description below okay so let's talk about tension and microtension and what that does for your story so first of all what is novel tension in a novel tension derives from moments when the reader wonders what will happen next. It's that simple. And moments that raise questions for the reader create anticipation and drive the reader to turn the page. And that's what you want. All right. So how to add tension in your novel is as easy as building with micro tension moments in every scene. So many beginning writers want to build that anticipation for the final big scene, the climax in a mystery that's the reveal of who the real villain is. But in order to get your reader to that final big reveal, you need to keep them turning pages throughout your story until they get there. Tension happens before the conflict. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between tension and conflict. The conflict actually resolves any tension that you've built uh, with a win or lose outcome. And when your character loses, the tension continues with new questions about what will happen next. Confusing conflict and tension can make your story feel episodic without creating much tension. So if you have lots of fights or lots of arguments um, and that's it, it it's, there's this one and this one and this one and that makes your story episodic and it doesn't build and it doesn't really create any tension. So without tension, your reader loses interest in your story. So arguments and fight scenes don't raise tension. Um, they bring tension to a close. So you need to understand the difference between tension and conflict. So if conflict isn't tension, how do you sustain tension in your story? So what you want to do is work with micro tension moments. I talk a lot about tiny details in your story and how important they are, and it's the same with building tension. You use small increments in each scene to create tension, and this is the secret to keeping your reader interested in not just the final outcome, but what comes next right now. What comes next right now is why they want to keep reading. So. Every situation you create in your story has the potential to increase tension and generating interest for your reader. So you'll create a sense of suspense in the mind of your reader and every, and every problem has the potential to generate tension. So you want lots of problems in your story. So um, successful agency creator Donald Moss believes in microtension as a story creation craft and he breaks it down into three sections. He says, in dialogue tension is not what is being discussed between but between the people talking. In action tension is not in the action itself but inside the point of view character. In exposition, tension comes from emotions in conflict and ideas at war. Okay, so we're going to break these down one by one. Um, 
So you can use them in your scene building to sustain tension because scenes are the building blocks of your story and so you want that tension in each scene, okay? Even if a scene is exposition, we're going to talk about that in a minute, it's describing the setting, where your character is, you can still add tension. All right, so let's talk about tension in dialogue. Dialogue is action. I, I say this a lot. You need to think of dialogue as action. It's action with words. And those words are between characters who have desires and motivations that drive them to behave and act and speak toward reaching that personal goal, their personal motivations. So one of those actions, if those motivations drive actions, one of those actions is the way they communicate with other characters. So your sleuth, for instance, wants to solve the crime and the reader knows that motivation. So they want to see how the sleuth talks to suspects and others in order to solve the crime. Your reader knows when your detective holds back information in dialogue in order to probe a suspect. Now the suspect may not know that, the character in the story, but your reader knows what your sleuth's main goal is. And at the same time, your reader may have little information about the suspect and how the suspect behaves and what they say is a clue, not just to their personality, but their willingness to cooperate with your sleuth. For example, if the suspect is hesitant in conversation, dialogue, your reader will have questions about what the suspect is holding back. And that is a micro-tension moment. It's like, your reader's like, well, why is he doing that? Okay, so then let's talk about tension in action. So your character is taking action in both proactive and responsive scenes. And what your character thinks is action. It's like internal dialogue. Dialogue is action, okay? In the same way, so it's in this, what your character thinks works in the same way that dialogue works. Uh, it's something the character does. Um, so the best way to build tension with action is to show your character's feelings about what is happening. Showing feeling is a positive way to get the reader in the character's head, not just seeing what they do, observing. Um, uh, and this way of building tension prompts the reader to question your character's feelings. What is the character going to do with that feeling, especially if the feeling is in opposition to the action that's happening right now? So in other words, now that the reader knows your character's emotional response to an action, they can wonder what action the character will take next. So do you see how in a scene you can build that question, that wondering, that anticipation for the reader by letting the reader know what the character is feeling as well as the actual action they are taking. Okay, tension and exposition. So exposition is the background of your story. It's the where and when of the story. And you can keep it from being dry by adding details that raise questions for your reader. Uh, did a war just end? Is a war about to begin? Does a storm limit your character's movement? Are the city streets threatening or full of life? And so once again, Use specific details starting in a specific scene rather than sweeping generalizations. Those specific details really hook 
your reader. And if you add an emotional punch to those specific details by how the character responds to those details, um, you're building those micro moments of tension. Um, you want, your reader wants to know what character details mesh with that background that you're presenting in your exposition and how does that background impede your character and how does that background move your character forward um, how does the background set a mood in the scene and how does the background set an overall tone for your story um, and does that background represent conflict for your character for instance if your sleuth is going to an unfamiliar environment a simple one is um, um, a small town detective who has to follow a clue to a big city and they're just not used to how things work in a big city those are the micro moments that you can use to build tension with exposition. So a bit of exposition in every scene gives your reader details and then your reader needs to know how those details affect the story. So the main point of those micro moments of tension is to keep your reader wondering. The secret to building tension page by page is to add details that build anticipation for your reader and at the start of each scene you want to make the reader wonder what will happen now in this scene that's the important trick it's now in this scene it's not what's going to happen at the big reveal at the end it's like right now what's going to happen oh i've got to find out i need to keep reading and that's what you want in your scene if you build your story with microtension moments, your reader will always be wondering what is next. And even though your story has that big reveal, the surprise of the true villain revealed, in order to get your reader to that point at the end, you want them to keep reading from the beginning. Um, so ask yourself, what is the microtension moment in this scene? So each scene give, provides you an opportunity to raise questions for your reader. So repeat that question for every scene. What is the microtension moment in this scene? And you'll raise questions and build anticipation throughout your entire story. All right, I hope that helps and I hope um, that you understand how microtension can really add reader enthusiasm. That, 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 they, they can't put the book down. Uh, you, the, even when you're writing a mystery, it isn't like an action-adventure story where lots of big things are happening and people are literally hanging off cliffs. But you can give that anticipation, that sense of what's going to happen next um, by working with the details in each scene. So I hope that helps. And uh, if, you, if you're just starting out writing a mystery and it all seems kind of overwhelming, um, Write a Killer Mystery is the course for you. It focuses on writing a mystery. So you'll find the link in the description below. So please check it out. I'm happy to see you in the group. All right. Thank you. And if you like this episode of Write a Killer Mystery, don't forget to subscribe and click that little notification bell. So you'll get a notice when the next episode of Write a Killer Mystery arrives. All right, keep writing.